Hello, everyone, and welcome to our weekly state policy update. My name is Jax James, and I am Normal's state policy manager. So we've got a blog today that is posted in the description of this video that will go over the bills I'm going to talk about, which are some newly filed and some moving bills from across the country. And then if you guys want to comment where you're watching from, I will come back and take a look at what is going on in your state. Um, some of the uh, states across the country, their sessions have already adjourned. Others are still continuing on. Some have adjournments coming up soon. For example, here in Texas, we have just about 11 days left in our sessions. So lots of work to be done here in Texas. But let's go ahead and talk about the moving and new legislation. And then I'll come to these comments, see where y'all are watching from, and give you a little bit more information um, about your state. So let's first talk about what is going on in Minnesota. So there are um, two bills, a set of bills, HF100 and SF73, that permits adults to purchase two ounces from state licensed retailers, home cultivate up to eight plants, and possess up to two pounds. The bill facilitates an automatic review and expungement of records for those that have been previously convicted of certain violations, and on-site consumption will be allowed at certain permitted events. Municipal officials will be able to impose regulations regarding the total number of cannabis businesses and their location, but they may not prohibit their operations. So the update here is that the House version passed the House 71 to 59. The Minnesota Senate version passed the Senate 34 to 33, so very close vote there. Lawmakers have now resolved the differences between the House back and the Senate back marijuana legislation measure. The final measure goes back to both chambers now for a final floor vote, which could take place as soon as today, as their legislative session is ending very soon. Now, if they don't sign it before the end of the legislation, which is in just, or the end of the session, which is in just a day or two, it can be uh, revisited uh, and held over for the next session. However, we are hoping it will be reapproved by both chambers and then advance to Democratic Governor Tim Waltz's desk, who does intend to sign this bill into law. Minnesota is poised to be the 23rd state to legalize marijuana. And so I encourage you to go to our blog post for today and take a look at that action alert if you live in Minnesota and urge your senator and representative to vote quickly on this matter so it can be enacted as soon as possible. So let's talk about some legislation having to do with medical access. So in California, SB 302 expands current law requiring specific type of healthcare facilities to allow for terminally ill patients to use medical cannabis within the facility. The legislation expands the law to provide access to those that are 65 and up and struggle with a chronic disease. This bill has passed the California Senate Judiciary Committee unanimously and is scheduled for a hearing before the Senate Appropriations Committee tomorrow on the 18th of May. Now in Vermont, HB 270 increases the number of plants that a patient can cultivate at home, allowing for six mature and 12 immature plants. It also increases the allowable THC content in a single edible cannabis product from 50 to 100 milligrams. It additionally increases the number of patients for whom a caregiver can provide services and removes the annual registration fee for those qualified caregivers. SB, or I'm sorry, HB uh, 270 has passed the Vermont House and the Vermont Senate and is awaiting action by the governor. So that is definitely some good legislation that is going on. I want to talk about a few additional bills before I get to some bills that have enacted and failed. Um, but I do want to encourage everyone who's watching to go ahead and comment where you're watching from in the comments so that I can come back and give you a personalized update for your state. Um, so I want to talk about one more California bill, SB 51, authorizes the Department of Cannabis Control to issue provisional retail licenses for local cannabis equity applicants for up to five years if the applicant meets requirements. Now, in California, SB 51 has been scheduled for a hearing in the Senate Appropriations Committee tomorrow the 18th. Now, there's two bills from Louisiana that I want to highlight. 
HB 286 allows for those with marijuana possession misdemeanor offenses to file for a motion for expungement of their records 90 days following their conviction. First-time offenders would also be exempt from processing fees. So the update is that HB 286 is scheduled for a hearing in the Louisiana House Criminal Justice Committee today on the 17th of May. Now, HB uh, 351 out of Louisiana prevents qualified medical patients from being disqualified from workers' compensation or from being denied unemployment compensation. And HB 351 has a hearing in the Louisiana House Committee on Labor and Industry tomorrow. So definitely make sure that you participate in those action alerts if you are watching from Louisiana. Now let's talk about some legislation that was recently enacted. In Maryland, HB 232 redefines child neglect statutes so that parents use cannabis of use of cannabis is no longer considered a prima facie evidence in case uh, or in the crime. The new law states neglect does not include the use of cannabis by any parent or individual who has permanent or temporary custody or care responsibility or supervision of a child unless as the result of the use of cannabis, the child's health or welfare is harmed or placed at substantial risk or if the child has suffered mental injury or has to be placed at substantial risk of mental injury. So this just kind of strengthens some parental protection in the state of Maryland. Now, I did want to mention a bill that failed this week in New Hampshire. I'm sure you guys have been watching the roller coaster of HB 639 and HB 360. Both were previously passed by the House of Representatives. However, they failed in the Senate 14 to 10, largely along party lines, with all but one of the Senate Democrats voting yes and all but one of the Senate Republicans voting no. Both bills sought to legalize the use of marijuana and establish a state, state licensed marketplace. So the day after the vote, Governor Sununu issued a statement saying, basically reversing his past opposition to adult use legalization, but further indicating that he only supported a system that allows for retail sales of cannabis through state run stores. He said, New Hampshire is the only state in New England where recreational use is not legal. Knowing that a majority of our residents support legalization, it is reasonable to assume change is inevitable. To ignore this reality would be short-sighted and harmful. That is why with the right policy and framework in place, I stand ready to sign a legalization bill that puts the state of New Hampshire in the driver's seat, focusing on harm reduction, not profits. Similar to our liquor sales, this path helps keep substance away from kids by ensuring the state of New Hampshire retains control of marketing, sales, and distribution, eliminating any need for taxes, for additional taxes, excuse me. As such, the bill was defeated in New Hampshire this session because it was not the right path for our state. Now, there is a um, legislator who had authored another bill that is still technically alive that could be amended potentially, although it's a bit of a long shot in New Hampshire. Uh, but I did want to let you guys know, uh, unfortunately, the bills uh, did not make it through the Senate. But now we do have Governor Sununu on the record saying that he does support a certain type of legalization pro uh, program. All right, so let me come back over here to your comments and see where you guys are watching from. So first I see Pennsylvania. All right, so in Pennsylvania, <clears throat> First of all, let me tell anyone who is watching what you can do um, if I don't happen to highlight your state or if I don't see your comment, you can go to normal.org slash act and you'll see a map there. You can just hover over your state and it will pop up all of the action alerts that we have for your state. So whenever I tell you what uh, bills are going on now, that's where I want you to go to normal.org slash act and click on your state so you can participate them in, with them. So in Pennsylvania, we have legislation having to do with um, DUI, adding edibles to the medical program, legalization, and medical cannabis reimbursement. So definitely some good legislation going on in Pennsylvania that you can support. Let's see. Someone from Minneapolis, which is Minnesota. So we definitely talked about that one. Kansas, I think is... 
their session is over, I believe. One second. Let me just double check. Yes, Kansas. Well, technically, Kansas session ends on the 22nd, but um, the bills that were uh, alive in Kansas did die from failing to cross over from one chamber to the next in time for the deadline. All right, let's look at Indiana. All right, Indiana's session actually ended on April 29th. Now, for anybody um, who's watching, don't forget we have federal actions you can participate in as well. So just because there's not something going on in your state right now, there are, I believe, four action alerts on normal.org slash act that target our federal legislators. So you can still definitely participate in those. All right, California, I did touch on the California bills that are going on there. Texas, okay, in Texas, we are getting very close to the end of the session. We've got about um, 11, 12 days left. Um, three bills have moved from the House to the Senate. None of them have been scheduled yet for a Senate hearing. So we actually do have an action alert right now at texasnormal.org. Our first blog post of the day is how to keep our bills alive. We have a call to action to reach out to your senators and also a call script to call um, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. There are quite a few bills that would really benefit Texans that we want to make sure we get across the line. Of course, when time is short, it can be a little stressful. So I encourage all of you to go ahead and reach out and let the uh, Republican senators know that you do support this legislation. All right. Well, looks like I covered all of the states that you guys commented here. So thank you for tuning into this broadcast. If you're watching at a later time, I want to remind you to go to normal.org slash act participate in those federal actions up at the top, hover over your state and see what's going on in your state. And definitely um, keep in touch with your local chapters. I've included a link to chapters near you in the description of this uh, video. So I hope you guys have all of you have an amazing Wednesday. And I look forward to seeing you next week. So until then, have a great week.